We just did with it. Let's give God the glory still. <laughs> Holy Spirit, 
who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory.
through praise and worship, primarily because he and he alone deserves to be praised, honored, and worshiped. God's glory is the essence of his nature, and we give glory to him by recognizing this essence. Now, glory, giving glory to God, is to extol his attributes, to focus on his attributes. His holiness, his faithfulness, his mercy, his grace, his love, his majesty, his sovereignty, his power, omniscience, omnipotence, all of these things, omnipresence. And as we praise him, by honoring these attributes, we are recognizing his glory. Another writer said something more along these lines. Glory of God is all the attributes of God coming together so that we can praise His glory, His character, His nature, His personality through His attributes. So what is the glory of God? Is it the cloud that entered into the temple? Yes. What is the glory of God? People shouting out praises? Yes. The glory of God is all of these things. The, the question that, that we really need to focus on, not so much as what is the glory of God, but maybe how do we give God or rec His glory or recognize the glory of God through His people? Did He create us for His glory? The scripture says He did. And so how do we impress upon others through our lives the glory of God? I don't know that we will get to a, a, a steps one, two, and three on this, but we're going to look at some scripture that deals with the glory of God. We're going to uh, uh, talk a little bit about it. We'll start here in Psalm 19 with just the, the first four verses, and we're going to move to Psalm 24. We're going to look at a few more verses that deal with the glory of God. Then we'll look at a few other, a couple of other passages that bring us again to, to the throne of God in the presence of the glory of God. First of all, Psalm 19, verse 1, verses 1 through 4 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies proclaim the work of His hands. And day after day they pour out speech, night after night they communicate knowledge. There is no speech, there are no words, their, their voice is not heard. Their message has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. The, the psalm continues to... to, to Illuminate this idea that the heavens declare the glory of God. Now we know this from Genesis, the beginning that God created the heavens and the earth. He did this in a glorious fashion. He did this for his own recognition. One of the ways that God reveals himself to us is through creation, which uh, directs us to his perfection, his glory. Uh, some of you all like the beach. You can have it. Some of us like the mountains. It's even better. Some of you like the trees and the forest. Some of you like the, the, the grass and the, and, and, and the flat lands. Whatever you like, in whatever ge geography you're in, whether it be desert or forest or, 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 or mountain or beach, God's glory is declared by His creation. He is a glorious God. And everything He has done, He, he, he has done to point us to him in character and nature and person. The heavens declare his glory. Glory is not just the thing of earth, but it's the thing of heaven. The heavens declare his glory. The earth and creation declares his glory. Now, as his people, we too, and as the crown of creation, we should declare his glory. Now, glory is a, a thing of splendor, isn't it? Glory is a thing of perfection. Glory is a thing of greatness. So if we are to declare the glory of God as the crown of creation, what should we be? Who should we be? How should we be seen? Well, I hope, if we go back to John chapter 1, in the creation of the, or the giving of, of the, the one and only, who comes in glory, the glory of the Father. We should be like Jesus. In perfection. Now I know we sin, I know we're forgiven, and I, I get all that. But we should be the 
attempting to, to live in such a way that through our lives, the perfection of Christ can be seen through creation, but also through living it out. In Psalm 24, we have a, a song about the king of glory. So whose glory is it? It's God's. He is the king of glory. This is a short psalm. We'll, we'll read the whole thing here, and we'll look at the last few verses in it. It says that earth and everything in it, the world and its inhabitants, belong to the Lord. For he said, uh, uh, belong to the Lord. For he laid his foundations on the seas, and he established it on the rivers. Who may ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has set his mind, who has not set his mind on what is false. And who has not sworn deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord, the righteousness from God, from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Rise up, you ancient doors. Then the king of glory will come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Rise up, you ancient doors. Then the king of glory will come in. Who is he? This king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. So it, the, the psalm begins with a challenge to us to live in perfection. To live out these attributes of God in our own life. God and everything in it, the world and the inhabitants, they belong to God. He laid the foundation. Who may ascend the mountains of the Lord who may stand in the Holy The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. The one who has kept himself from defilement. <coughs> who has not set his man on what is mine on what is false. Who has not sworn deceitfully. The one who has clean hands and pure hearts will bring God this kind of glory. We'll, rip, we'll show the world the glory of God. So really, as we look at the glory of God, it's a call to personal holiness, isn't it? It's a call to right living so that His perfection can be seen. He says, rise up, you ancient doors, or lift up, you ancient gates. That's a, that's a mind picture. It's symbolism. When I was in Israel, one of the things I got to see was that they called the Gate of Abraham. You can look it up on the internet. You'll see a, a mud brick, uh, a city wall, an old gate to a community. It's a gate that Abraham would have passed through as he left uh, the southern regions and went north uh, toward Galilee. And, and, and he was in this region of Dan. And he would have passed through this ancient gate. There was a purpose behind these ancient gates. So they would build a, a, a city wall. The, the city wall may be no bigger. In fact, in many cases, maybe it's smaller than just the, uh, if we went around our building. They weren't always huge places, but they were protected places. They were a place where they could gain advantage over an enemy who would be attacking. Now what the psalmist here is saying is when you live in perfection, when you live in the glory of God, when you have a clean heart, a pure mind, you can raise your gates and let the king of glory in. Because you don't have to worry about the enemy. And as you raise your gates and you re relieve yourself of the protection of the things of man and let in God himself, there is a greater protection than you could ever imagine. It is the glory of God. Why? Were the, the, the people of Jericho afraid of the coming battle? Why were they shaking, shaking in their boots as the Israelites approached and surrounded them in March? They sent six days once around the city. And on the seventh day, as they marched seven times around the city, why were they scared? Because they saw the glory of the Lord as the Israelites crossed the Jordan River on dry ground. It wasn't the army that they feared, but it was the God of the army who had shown his glory as they crossed the Red Sea, as they entered the desert lands, 
as they crossed the Jordan River, as they, God continued to show his blessings and his power and his mind, and as he revealed his glory to the nations. He was their protector. You can raise your gates. You can open your doors when you are right with the Lord. Now, I just want to uh, move, I want to move to Isaiah 42, and I want to look at, at, at a piece that applies to this. So we've looked at the glory of the Lord, whose is it? We, we should be motivated to be pure and clean of heart because of it, so that we can represent the glory of the, of the Lord to the nations. And as we represent the glory of the Lord, the Lord will bless us with his peace as he enters our gates. But ultimately, whose glory is it? Here in Isaiah, chapter 42, verse, verse 8, just a simple verse here, he says, I am Yahweh, that is my name. Remember what Yahweh means, by the way? I am who I am, or I am that I am. Some translations will simply say, I am, and no elaboration, which honestly I think is the best translation. God needs no elaboration. He is. He's God. What does it mean that He is, that I am? It means my glory speaks for itself. In everything I do, there is perfection. There is nothing left undone that I intend to do or that I have set out to do. I have accomplished that which, which I put my hand to. God says, I am God. I am. Very simply. Here He says in verse 8, I am God. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. <laughs> I announce them to you. Uh, no. These past events have, have indeed happened. Now I declare new events. I announce them to you before they come. I, I, I've been reading through this section of Isaiah, uh, chapter 41 also, it is a great chapter. It's got some great uh, uh, things in there that, that you may hear more about uh, coming. Uh, the Lord leads me in that direction. But, but here's, here's what's going on. He's declaring his glory in the midst of persecution. Context is always important. Where's Israel? Well, the remnant, those who are left, are in Babylon. They're persecuted. They're slaves. They're being mistreated. The temple, it's been destroyed. The city walls, they've been torn down. <laughs> Only a few are left. And in the midst of this, God wants to give the remnant hope. In the midst of their situation, he says, I'm not changing your situation just yet. But let me tell you who I am that's not dependent upon your situation. Let me tell you about me without regard to what you think I should be, to where you think you should be, to who you think I should be, to what you think I should be doing. Let me just tell you, let me just set you straight. I am Yahweh. That is my name. You, you're whoever you want to be, you're whoever you are. I got a plan for you. Don't, don't forget that. But understand, your situation is not determined by you, but by me. And though you may be in the mud, I still got the power to get you out. Though you may be in Babylon, I got the power to change this. In fact, the political situation is about to change. Babylonians are about to be overthrown. There's a, a, a more moderate, a more uh, understanding king this coming. Now, ultimately, there will be a king who's coming. His name is Jesus. But understand, I am Yahweh. That's my name. And I will not give it to another. As the Israelites were taken to Babylon, one of the first things they were, that, 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 that was attempted to be done to them is the removal of their God and the praise of the pagans, the gods of the culture. And God says, I will not change who I am. I am still planted firmly on the ground. My name is Yahweh. I will praise their gods. I will go that direction. I am jealous for my glory. It's 
his glory, and he will give it to none other. Now we are saying we, we, we are we are told that we are made in the glory of God, but did he give us his glory? No, he gave us his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in the glory of God. Has is the glory of God. He gave us an image, a reflection of his glory through our obedience as we go back uh, to the Psalms, looking at a clean heart and a pure way. Now as we move into the New Testament, knowing that it's God's glory, and knowing that glory is his nature, it is his attributes working together that we may see the work of him in perfection, and the glory is his so that he will be praised. As we move into the New Testament, the book of Acts, chapter 7. Book of Acts, chapter 7. There's a story that many of you will already know about a man named Stephen. Stephen, most commonly referred to as the first deacon or uh, being amongst the first deacons. Stephen was a man who followed Jesus. He was uh, called out by the apostles to do a ministry to the orphans and widows, particularly to make sure that the Greeks and the Jews were quit fighting over who got more stuff from the church, who got more help, but to make sure that the help was distributed fairly among the people. Honestly, the, the widows and the orphans is the name that's given to it, but you know what, what Stephen's job was? To stop the church in fire. To bring peace and calm to the community of believers. To be a trusted man who would be above the fray, among others. Now, Stephen was not just that man. Stephen was a man full of the Spirit. Stephen was a man who had the ability to speak and to reason. And as Stephen is sharing the gospel with the community, he begins to be persecuted stone for his faith. And as Stephen is given this message of salvation in Jesus and Jesus alone, as he's praising God the Father, let's pick up in verse 54, Acts chapter 7. When they heard these things, they were enraged in their hearts. They gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled by the Holy Spirit, Gazed into heaven, he saw God's glory. And glory is an atom. It's a reality. It's something. We can't touch it. We can't taste it. We can't feel it. We can see it and we can experience it. He looked up into heaven and he saw all the attributes of God together. He saw his glory. As Moses comes before God on the mountain. And he says, I want to see your face. And God says, you cannot see my face. My glory is too great. But I will hide you in a cleft and put my hand over you. And as I pass by, you can look upon my skirt or my, 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 uh, my robe. And you can see my glory. Stephen looked up into heaven, and he saw God's glory. When Jesus at the right hand of God, and he said, by the way, we'll get to what he said. By the way. Where's God? In heaven. Where's Jesus? Resurrected and ascended at the right hand of the Father. Where's the Holy Spirit? Brent referred to this earlier. See, he gave, he gave you a certain thought. The Holy Spirit's inside of Stephen as he spoke in the Spirit to God the Father and to the Son in heaven. Is heaven a real place? Absolutely. A few people get a vision of it in the flesh. Those who are in Christ will see it in its fullness and its reality. We need to we are told that the things of this world are, are dim, a shadow, 
but the heaven itself is the reality of these things. It is the fullness of the glory of God, where we can see it with clarity. And as Stephen looked up, and as he sees God in Christ and the Spirit working inside of him, he says, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And they screamed at the top of their voices. They covered their ears and together rushed against him. They threw him out of the city. They began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. They were stoning Stephen. He called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with your sin. Your sin. Say this. He fell asleep. He saw the glory of the Lord because he proclaimed the message of the glory of the Lord. The glory is God's. Salvation does not come to any man except through the name of Jesus. We do not get glory in our human body, form, flesh for the purpose of receiving it for ourselves. We cannot contain it. As David recovered the ark and was marching it back into Jerusalem. And they were having a great celebration. The Shekinah, and he places it in the tabernacle. The Shekinah glory of the Lord, that the cloud became so thick that the people could not approach. The glory was not for David. It was not in David. Now, Holy Spirit's in us, don't get me wrong. The glory is God's and is God's alone. He's jealous for his glory. The purpose of the glory is to draw us all men to himself, salvation. The purpose of the glory is to teach us the truth of who God is and his attributes. And to challenge us to be more like him. The glory of the Lord is to challenge us to be holy, clean, and pure. To have that clean heart, that upright life, where no deceit is found in us. The glory of the Lord, the purpose of the glory of the Lord is to move us as we move our feet as we get on our knees, as we lift our face and head toward heaven, as we cry out with our mouth and all that we are and a desire to be like Christ and help others do the same, the glory of the Lord is to call us in that right relationship that the glory would be received by God and not by us because it's His in character and nature, but it's also sent out to us so that we can share with others so that they can recognize it. The glory of the Lord leads us what Stephen did. And to praise God in such a way that nothing will stop us. You all seen the kids? They get so excited and break their enthusiasm. Even though it means broke. I was uh, observing a child just this week who wanted to get his point across. Dad kept saying, no, no, quiet now, not now, wait. Mom kept saying, you need to calm down, take a breath. And the boy couldn't contain his enthusiasm and excitement. And in rebellion against his parents, which I do not encourage, parents are always right, even when they're wrong, right, parents? God is always right, even when we think he's wrong, but he's not wrong. Now, the scripture says that we should respect our parents and be obedient to them. This child didn't have the capacity because he was so excited about what he had observed. That it had to happen right then. When was the last time we got that excited about the glory of God? Before we got to share the message of God and the attributes of God and the salvation of God. And nothing, including stone, would stop it. When Stephen got so in tune with the glory of God, the Holy Spirit rolling up inside him, he was able to physically look up to heaven and see the glory of the Father and the Son standing next to him. I'm not saying that you can get that excited about God and that he can open up the heavens for you, but I'm saying that the glory should motivate us that that would be our desire. His glory should call us to holy living. His glory should move us to holy sharing. 
His glory should move us to praising His name as we return all of what we are receiving, all of what we are feeling, all of what we are observing, all of what we are accomplishing, as we return all of this to God. It's His glory. And He will give it to us. We are called to worship. We are called to praise. The glory is God's. And it's God's alone. It is His nature and it is His character and it is His gift to us to see, to experience, and to use so that we can return it to Him. The best of my ability, that is my understanding of the glory. Have you experienced this glory in your life? This truth, this reality of who He is? The salvation that He gives and the peace and comfort that comes and the power that comes to have the Holy Spirit have you experienced the glory of God in your life? If not, would you receive Jesus this morning? You can't have it without Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father. I would make that commitment this morning. If not, would you receive this morning? Father God, as we look at your glory, the glory of the one and only, as you gave us Jesus so that we can see your glory in flesh. As you have revealed through the Old Testament scriptures and through the New Testament realities, both are true, both are complete, both are accurate. Your glory, your personality, your attributes. Father, help us to be drawn to you, into your presence, be changed. That we would receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, that we would make it a priority to learn to live as Jesus lived, to learn to model these attributes, these truths, these realities that are your glory. And as we recognize, become your children, glorifying our Father, our Maker, Lord, help us then to praise you in such a way that all this glory that we see, all this glory that we receive, all this glory that we've been able to use to draw others to Jesus, that we can give it back to you. That we can honor you with it. That we can worship you in all of your glory as we praise you. Father, speak to us this morning. Speak to our hearts. And as we leave this place, help us to be changed. That we would leave glorifying your name because of the glory that you are. We ask this in Jesus' name. We stand with you. You need to respond this morning. I'll be here to receive. You need to know Jesus, your Lord and Savior. You need to come and pray. The altars are open. As the Lord speaks, once you respond, the same thing.
signed up yet. I'm not prepared for the deadline, but it may, it's upon us if it's not already passed. Uh, check online at sti.org. Make sure you let me know that you're uh, going to be a part of, of our church's group that's going. And we'll arrange rides and such so we can go out together, spend some time together, as well as uh, part of that conference. Um, I don't think I have anything. Any other announcements? All right. Well, having no other announcements, we'll be dismissed with prayer. And we'll see you back again this evening. Don't forget Sunday school. It's up next. Father God, we love you. We thank you for the privilege of being together in your house. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for the glory of, uh, of the, through Jesus that we see and saw and, and, and experience. We thank you for your, for your glory and creation. We thank you for your glory of uh, continued sustaining and grace and gift us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who allows us to see and, and to grow and participate in the things of your kingdom. Now as we go, Lord, help us be motivated by your glory to praise and to worship and to bring others into your kingdom and then to return all this glory to you that you alone will be glorified. Lord, it is all yours. Lord, use us as we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.